Good day, virtual learners! Welcome to the third segment of Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. In our previous lesson on the second segment, found in Human Person in the Environment, Lesson 1, entitled The Approaches and Understanding Relationship of the Human Person with the Environment, you learn the major philosophical views regarding the person's relationship with nature that includes anthropocentrism, biocentrism, and ecocentrism. When we talk about anthropocentrism, it considered humans as the most significant species on the planet, and that nature provides humankind with the means to survive and develop. The next view is biocentric. You learn that individual gives equal importance to all organisms on the planet Earth and considers them as having an inherent worth. Then, the ecocentric view. You learned that it emphasized ecosystem and biological communities and considers humans stewards of nature. In this lesson, you generalize that human being has the capacity that comes to a degree of control over one's life and the environment. You also proved how the heightened awareness of this capacity also highlighted with the human being's position and power to have the domination over nature to transcend the cycle of the environment. The remarkable insight that you learned about the previous topic is the realization that human activities have a significant impact on the environment, such as the following pictures reveal. The current scientific evidence proves that human activities over the centuries have resulted in great changes in climate patterns throughout the world such as the global warming, earth pollution, soil erosion, great famine, and even typhoon catastrophe. This climate change and its related effects are among the most important environmental issues we face today. With the environmental ethics that you learn, it is the perspective that advocates action to address a growing environmental problems. You learned about the philosophical view related to environmentalism that mandates to analyze the relationship between humans and the environment that seeks to address environmental problems brought about by human activities. So as a student, you learn to advocate the sustainability development to address the problem in the environment destruction. That you learned to be efficient when it comes to your advocacy in preserving our natural resources. Moreover, you learn that there must be an emphasis on human activities and it must not unduly harm the environment. Natural resources must then be preserved wisely and the environment must be preserved for the next generation in order to address the environmentalism problem to follow with the advocacy of environmentalism in the philosophical aspect. Our topic for today is found in Chapter 5, Lesson 1, The Meaning of Freedom. It is based on most essential learning competency 5.2 stated to evaluate and exercise prudence in making choices based from the code PPT 11 slash 12 dash LLB dash 5.2. The following objectives that will be attained on this lesson are the following. Number one, defines freedom and distinguish between negative and positive concepts of freedom. Number two, 
analyzes situations that demonstrate consequence of choices. Number three, reflects on Jean Paul Sartre philosophical viewpoint on individual freedom. Lesson goal. In this chapter found in lesson one, the meaning of freedom. You will learn a possible answer of humankind gross misunderstanding of the concept of human freedom. For the sake of focus, it would be important to clarify what we mean by freedom and the distinction between positive and negative freedom according to Isaiah Berlin. Isaiah Berlin stated that freedom is largely interpreted as the capacity to do whatever individual wants without hindrance and limitation. Freedom is misunderstood in doing anything you want. Genuine freedom, however, is one that is always coupled with responsibility. In this lesson, you will apply the concept of freedom in different branches of philosophy. Freedom can mean many different things to different people. Here, you will realize the concern political freedom as advocated by Isaiah Berlin as he distinguished between the concept of positive and negative freedom. You will also examine these concepts and learn to recognize the difference between freedom from constraint and the freedom that comes from self-mastery or self-realization. Look at the picture and think about the concept of freedom. In your own point of view, what is the meaning of freedom? Then, you will have to analyze the essence of freedom. Let's pause for a break and we will write back. The Radio Z Escuela program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated, Maverick Builders Incorporated, Mitch Construction and Supply, Archicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanawai Builders Corporation. Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders, GP&H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation, Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated, We Inc. Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, East Sussex Enterprise, WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Miss Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. We are back. This time, you will learn about the definition of freedom. Freedom is an intrinsic and essential property of a person, and it is experienced through the act of making choices. It is important to exercise caution and prudence to reflect on possible courses of action in making decisions or doing actions. Freedom also means that as a nature of the human being is the individual freedom and that the individual has his or her nature to seek wisdom. As an important indication of human freedom is the ability to make choices and perform actions. In fact, our freedom to act sets us apart from other beings. According to the existentialist point of view, they believe that the real is not floating idea, but should be directly linked to a person's life. 
it should be visible in action. Existentialism is the freedom in exercising through making choices. The main tenet of existentialism is that we are the authors of our lives. For existentialist point of view, the concrete freedom is not just words, but it means it can be acted upon. Hence, the task of a human person who wants to be real and authentic is to take care of this capacity. This means that one must put in energy, power, and strength in all dimensions of his or her life. When one looks at people who are genuinely free, one observes that they are the ones who have kept themselves healthy. The ones who exercise the choice to say no to the temptations of vices. Moreover, the ones who work hard to improve themselves economically and spend their money wisely. Therefore, genuine freedom means a lot of daily work. Those who did the reverse mostly find themselves enslaved by others. These are the people who are victims of their laziness, their vices, and their indifferences. Prejudice, or the people who keep on blaming for their miserable life due to circumstances like extreme poverty, vicious and irresponsible parents, terror, teachers, and the like. Freedom is widely applied concept in different branches of philosophy. For the sake of focus, it would be important to clarify where does freedom rooted? Freedom is rooted in the human person's self-determination. When we talk of self-determination, it entails to the ability or power to make individual decisions. Especially, it has the power of the nation to decide how it will be governed. This also refers to the ability to become. The second one is intellectual exercise. When we talk about intellectual exercise, it is the process to manifest one's ideas and aspirations. A good act makes better while its opposite has a negative impact on him or her as a person. You are free to choose to be a good person and to act in a good way or in a bad way way. This is the nature of self-determination with the exercise of intellectual mentality. The essence of freedom requires a degree of control from the person who exercises it, and this is what we call as free will. So as a person, you have the ability to decide what to do independently of any outside influence that you exercises control over yourself in determining what is good or bad action. You have learned in this lesson that the essence of freedom is very important to an individual person. You come to ask, what is the essence of freedom deep within yourself? you will think and analyze and reflect that human freedom is our rights and suffrage as an individual human being. It is an inherent and inalienable right of a man and provides within the framework of knowledge a person possesses. Freedom can be described as a situation of behaving of people as a moral agent according to their own preferences and national decisions. 
On the other hand, when we speak of freedom, it is the ability to set your own schedule and to decide on the work you do, even to make vital decisions in life. It is your responsibility as being held accountable for your actions. It might involve figuring out how to get paid for your work, owning your own mistakes, or having others count on you. With the existentialism point of view, they answer about the significance of freedom as it is real, that the real is not a floating idea, but it should be directly linked to a person's life. It should be visible in action. In relation to our topic to this lesson, the existentialists argue that freedom should not only be conceived as an idea or a notion, but freedom significance is something that you exercise through making choices. When a person exercises his or her freedom, he or she becomes real. This time, try to look on the picture. Let's compare how animals and human persons behave to get a better understanding of freedom. Some animals behave like human beings because they seem to perform actions in response to giving commands. In fact, a well-trained dog can perform certain tasks on command such as stay or fetch because it has been trained and conditioned to perform them. The same cannot be said about human beings. You cannot just approach a stranger, toss him or her a ball and say fetch. Surely you will be met with curious and suspicious stares. A person will not respond automatically to the command to fetch because he or she is not conditioned to obey like the dog or animal. The human person does not experience the world in the same way that animals do. Animals act instinctively, meaning their actions are more like predetermined responses to certain stimuli. A person, on the other hand, can choose the course of action to take when given a stimulus or face with a certain situation. You expect your dog to always respond in the same way to your commands, like I did experience with my own pet dog. With us humans, our inherent freedom makes us a very dynamic creatures and our actions do not necessarily follow a set pattern or a predetermined course. Now we proceed with the two types of freedom. These are the negative freedom and positive freedom. We begin with the important distinction about these two types of freedom as advocated from a philosopher named Isaiah Berlin. Negative freedom refers to the absence of interference which is intentionally imposed to a person. This means that it may come in the form of physical coercion, such as kidnapping or imprisonment, even verbal coercion, such as issuing of threats to another person. This has a philosophical view that one is free in the negative sense when she does not experience either forms of coercion. Just like when you uttered, I am negatively free, free to the degree to which no human being interferes with my actions and even my activity. To that extent, you can have the elaboration of 
having enjoyment with an unimpended and uncoerced making of choices. In short, negative freedom is the absence of coercion or interference. When we talk about positive freedom, it refers to the possibility of making actions to take control of one's life to, re to realize one's fundamental purposes. It is not just about the absence of coercion, but it is more than just being let alone by others. Say, for example, as a student, you are being invited to attend with a fiesta celebration, and there is an incoming examination. So, as a student, you prefer to study than to attend with a fiesta celebration. It indicates that deep within yourself, you possess freedom, which is a positive one, to control or mastery of yourself, so as the strength to do what is good, which is prioritizing your study, above all, than to attend fiesta celebration. Try to reflect. Have you been in this kind of situation? What are the things that you considered in making choice? Let's proceed to a moment of reflection. Students, examine your actions, habits, and behavior by asking yourselves with these questions. What should I do? Why should I do it? What will happen if I do it? How will my actions or behavior affect myself, others, and my surroundings? Will my actions or behavior be considered correct, proper, beneficial, and moral? This time, let's proceed to evaluation part. Direction. Exercise prudence in your choice or decision. What should you do in this situation? Mang Lito was walking down the street. He suddenly saw a boy crossing the busy road. The boy was chasing after a basketball ball that had bounced off into the road. The boy had his eyes on his ball and did not realize that there was oncoming traffic on the road. At the same time, a taxi was passing along the road. Its driver saw the boy suddenly crossing and he quickly applied his brake to stop the car. The taxi was about to hit the boy when Mang Lito decided to stop the car. The taxi was about to hit the boy when Mang Lito decided to take action, run across the road, and grab the boy to safety. On the given situation, evaluate the actions and choices that should supposedly be made in the given situation of Mang Lito by following the guided question. Number one. What did Mang Lito do when he realized the boy was about to be hit by the car? Number two, what can you say about the actions of Mang Lito? What do you think will be the result of his actions? Number three, would it be possible for other people on the sidewalk to risk their lives like Mang Lito did? Yes or no? Share concrete example. This time, I will going to entertain questions about the lesson. I will give time for you to reflect and evaluate on the evaluation questions. This time, let's pause for a break. The Rajo Z Escuela program of the Division of Davao de Oro is being brought to you by Nueda Builders Construction and Supply Incorporated, Maverick Builders Incorporated. Mitch Construction and Supply, Archicons Architectural Construction and Supply, DB Construction and Supply, Hanawai Builders Corporation, Phoenix Corvada Tagum Gasoline Station, Master Construction and Supplies, Mackenzie Builders, GP and H Construction Incorporated, Metro Gear Construction Corporation, NEN Builders and Development Services Corporation, Max Maze Enterprises Incorporated. We in Construction Company, Rangai Construction and Supply, 
East Sussex Enterprise, WM Construction, Councillor Boogie and Miss Marjorie Vertodazo, Icon Builders and Supply, and Apex Mining Company Incorporated. All right, virtual learners, we're back. To wrap up, we come to conclude that freedom can mean many different things. The word can have a powerful motive force. It concerned with political freedom as advocated by Isaiah Berlin as he distinguished between the concept of negative and positive freedom. Freedom is an intrinsic and essential property of a person. The human person is by nature free and seeks freedom. To act sets us apart from other beings. It is also understood to be the power to create and define oneself. It is also rooted in the person's self-determination and the exercise of intellect and freedom. Having and exercising freedom shall entail certain responsibilities. Human actions can either uphold or diminish freedom. A person becomes less free when he or she does not exercise control over his or her actions. Actions that diminish freedom also dehumanize a person as it sets us apart from other human beings. You also learn that freedom is experienced through the act of making choices. It is therefore important for persons to exercise caution and prudence and reflect on possible courses of action in making decisions or doing actions. Just like this example, as a human, our inherent freedom makes us very dynamic creatures and your actions do not necessarily follow a set pattern or a predetermined course. For instance, your mother may ask you to clean your room one day and you will follow her instruction. On the following week, however, you may decide not to clean your room because you feel lazy. The week after, you may decide to clean your room without even being told. These varied actions indicate that you are exercising your freedom. Freedom is rooted in the human person's self-determination and the exercise of intellect and the freely will. As you come to realize with your most significant others, just like your parents or even your mother may tell you about the freedom facets of making decision. This means that a person's every action is freely determined and these actions define him or her. You can freely choose to be a good person and to act in a good way. A good act makes better while its opposite has a negative impact on him or her as a person. This is the nature of self-determination that a person's action determine what kind of person he or she becomes. Freedom gives us the choice to undertake one of these possible actions. The essence of freedom requires a degree of control from the persons who exercise it. A person becomes free when he or she exercises control over himself or herself. Bear in mind that in the concept of freedom, it is based on the existentialist point of view in philosophy that says it is not just abstract words. My task, if I want to be real and authentic, is to take care of this capacity to be free. My task is to define my essence, not to be imprisoned by a predetermined essence of a human person. In fact, my presence is not predetermined, as existence precedes essence, as what Jean-Paul Sartre advocated. Jean-Paul Sartre's concept of freedom is therefore the very core and the door 
to authentic existence. He said, authentic existence is being realized only in the deeds that are committed alone, in the absolute freedom and responsibility, and which therefore the character of true creation. These are the references of our topic today. Thank you, virtual listeners. This is Ma'am Angeli Tangal Aris from Pantukan National High School signing off. God bless us all. Rajas Escuela Executive Committee, the school's division superintendent, Yofemia T. Gamutin Sesa.